So sure, maybe you're getting a few referrals in your practice. Uh, maybe they're coming in fairly regularly. But are you getting referral intensity? That's what we're going to be talking about today, referral intensity. So make sure you stick around for that. Welcome to Coffee with Dr. Scott, once again with water. It is the last day for us to be dealing with water. Uh, today is day, full day five for me. I have not eaten since Sunday night uh, on this little water fast. And that sounds so terrible when I say it. Uh, but I've actually been enjoying the water fast. In fact, might be a second question of the day today when we get around to it. Uh, but tomorrow I can start drinking coffee again. Uh, but it actually might have decreased, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I might limit my coffee now after this, uh, which I know I have had a few people picking at me for drinking too much coffee. So this water fast might have gotten to a place where I don't need as much. Uh, but I didn't have any caffeine withdrawals at all, so, uh, I'm happy about that. Uh, maybe coffee's not that bad. I do drink good coffee as well, good organic coffee, so I don't have too much withdrawals or toxins from it. Anyways, I do get to start eating tomorrow. Uh, I think I told you I did this because my daughter, I talked to my daughter into doing it for some skin issues, uh, just to clear it out, see what kind of happened. Uh, so she did a three-day, I ended up doing a five-day just to kind of be ahead of her and support her, which she appreciated, uh, which, which was nice. Um, but I do finally get started tomorrow. I am looking forward to that. I haven't been hungry. I'm actually enjoying the fasting. A lot of people think I'm crazy when I say I haven't eaten in five days, but uh, I know some of you have done it as well. Uh, but again, I'm actually enjoying it. I'm trying to find a way to put it into my life maybe once a week, fast once a day, one day, once a week, uh, maybe intermittent fasting, maybe a three-day fast every month. That would reduce 10% of my calories. Uh, then I can eat a little bit more at other times. So uh, if anybody knows anything about regular fasting, because I don't. I, I've done this once a year, once, you know, twice a year maybe, uh, on a regular basis just to clean myself out. I always feel better. But I want to kind of keep on top of it. So if anybody knows uh, the best way to do that, share that with me. Uh, anyways, question of the day. <laughs> Terrence says there can never be too much coffee. and uh, I tend to agree with you. But uh, again, this fast is maybe thick. Maybe I don't need as much as I, I usually do. Uh, anyways, question of the day today, besides do you know the best way to, to regularly fast, uh, it's really just kind of for fun. Um, is, is it Coke, Pope, Pop, or soda where you come from? When I travel across the country doing my tour, uh, I notice that there's a huge difference in what people consider it. So, um, let's see here. There it is. Uh, so is it Coke, Pop, or soda? Again, traveling around, I hear a lot of different things, um, and I always kind of get thrown off by it. It was always soda to, to, in my family. Uh, second part of that question, eh, I guess I won't put anybody on the spot. I'll just tell my story. I haven't had a soda since I was a senior in high school, uh, or a pop, or a Coke, or a cola, or whatever you might call it. So tell me what you call it in the comments down below. Uh, I've just never drank. I, I drank stuff a lot in high school. Um, I was a big fan of Jolt. Anybody remember Jolt? Uh, twice the caffeine, right? Um, I see a few uh, few new watchers on here who are who are younger probably don't remember Jolt. Uh, I used to love Jolt soda, but anyways, I quit drinking my senior year in high school just for sports, just for athletics, just for nutrition reasons, uh, and I just never picked it back up. Like today, if I looked at somebody drinking a soda, it actually kind of nauseates me. Like there's nothing good about soda to me, um, nothing tempting about it whatsoever. I agree with Taryn; there can never be too much coffee, but uh, soda's not a thing. My kids have never had soda. I lied. It wasn't a couple weeks ago that uh, my daughter came home and told on her brother that uh, at the movie theater with Grandma, he took a sip of her uh, root beer. I blew up. I went crazy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but they, they've never had soda. It's not in our house. It's just not something they drink. When they even go out to birthday parties, they don't have soda. Um, my oldest daughter, I know, has had it a couple times, but not much. She's also turned off by it. So soda's not something in our family. Uh, so what do you call it in your uh, neck of the woods? Put it down below. Speaking of me traveling all over the country and doing uh, these, um, learning about soda, Coke, and pop, uh, I am on tour here right now, and it's been pretty aggressive. Next week, I'm out in Albuquerque, Phoenix, Tucson, and Vegas. So if you're in any of those areas and like to have me come evaluate your practice, make sure you uh, either put tour in the comments down below, T-O-U-R, or just shoot, shoot me a private message. If you know anybody in those areas, go ahead and tag them in the comments down below so that they know that I'm coming to them. Uh, I think they would appreciate uh, the the evaluation that I do when I'm out there. All righty. Let's see. Soda. 
because you're from Utica. <laughs> oh, really? Alyssa being a, a Western New Yorker, making fun of us Central New Yorkers who say soda. She says pop. Um, Taryn says Coke, no matter what the actual brand is. She just calls it Coke. Not even cola, Taryn? Um, I guess, all right. Thanks, Ted, for joining us here, Tenna. Uh, Dennis, Chess is joining us. All right, good crew on this morning. So, Next week, we are going to start talking about the six essence, essence components that I talked about yesterday. We're probably going to start spending a week on each of them. Um, so I'm going to break down each of the six essence components week by week, uh, really dig deep into them, uh, show you how you can develop them in your practice, show you how you can find where you're lacking in your practice, uh, and show you how to fix those things that are lacking. So that starts next week. Before we get there, I want to talk about one more key factor to understand the referral mastery. Uh, and that's going to be referral intensity. Uh, I think I... Ah. All right, referral intensity. So, again, as I'm traveling around and I talk to docs and I, 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 I look at their statistics, a lot of docs out there are getting anywhere from 6 to 10, maybe upwards of 12, 15 referrals per month. Uh, it's kind of average. If you're not getting that, then you're de definitely down on the scale, and you definitely have to know these six essence components. Uh, as I talk to doctors who don't get a bunch of referrals but also don't manufacture any, they don't try, they, they just accept what comes to them, they're not really making an effort to, to get more referrals. As I talk to those doctors, I, 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 it's obvious to me which of the essence components they're missing, and they have so many things in their practice that are just repelling patients. The patients that come in like them, uh, and, and again, we're going to talk about each of those essence components as we go, uh, but they're not getting referral intensity that we're going to talk about here. So some of the super practices that I work with, some of the ones that do seven figures or some of the ones that do have multiple practices, they're enjoying what I call referral intensity. And that basically means that they're, they're literally feeling the, the pressure to expand their practice because of the incredibly high number of direct referrals that, that are calling in each month. Like, they're seriously wondering where to put people uh, because they get so many referrals per month. And they're getting... Referral intensity doesn't just mean the number of new patients you're getting. Referral intensity also means the strength with which those patients are referred. Uh, I talked about it a little bit in uh, Perfect Case Acceptance, but I didn't use this term because we weren't on a referral uh, concept. But I talked about the idea behind Perfect Case Acceptance was that everybody accepted the case that you presented to them paid for it, scheduled it, all that kind of stuff. But they also went out and dragged people in, pre-sold, to also accept the case that you, you uh, present to them, pay for it, show up for the visits, whatever, and also go out. So it just becomes a cycle, a sustainable practice that's high on referrals. Uh, and that intensity means that, that those patients are going out and, and talking to people strongly about you, not just saying, oh, yeah, you know, my doc's okay. So for me, docs that are getting anywhere between zero and 10 referrals per month are certainly not experiencing what we call referral intensity. Uh, those are typically, you're good clinically. Uh, and again, that's one of the six essence comp components is, is competence, clinical and interpersonal competence. Uh, if you're good clinically, you'll get zero to 10 referrals just because you're good. Uh, again, as I said all week long, Patients come in predisposed to refer. They want to refer to you. And as long as you don't screw it up, they will. So those 0 to 10 numbers are typically just because you're good at what you do, uh, which is a great thing. Obviously, it's one of the six essence components. Uh, but we can increase that. Uh, when someone asks about their doctor, if you're getting that 0 to 10 and you're getting that low referral intensity, if someone asks your patient about you, they might you know, reluctantly give them your name. They might say, yeah, he's okay. Uh, you know, they're not too bad. That's not really a strong referral. Uh, they might let them know that, yeah, my guy's okay. Come on in and see him. But it's not a strong referral. Uh, again, that's usually when you're good. Maybe your cost is a little uh, high. Maybe you're not very convenient. Maybe you don't have some of the other essence components in there. So you don't get that strong referral in intensity. But you can hear it in their voice. If, and I've heard it. I'm sure you, maybe you have. You might be at a coffee shop or a restaurant. And you overhear somebody talking. And they're talking about the chiropractors, and you know, as chiropractors, we're always kind of like, what do they say? Uh, and they might be talking about their chiropractor. And you, maybe you've heard that weak referral intensity that, yeah, you know, I, I enjoy my chiropractor. He's all right. That's not what we're looking for here. Um, so if your referral numbers are strong, 
maybe starting in the 20s. That's even say 15 or above. Uh, the patient will wholeheartedly recommend you. And they may take even, and again, you, if you've heard this at a coffee shop, you know what I'm talking about. They might take a few se- few minutes to share a few sentences of how cool their experience is with you. Uh, so now if a patient asks them, I'm sorry, if a friend asks a patient, um, you know, I know you go to a chiropractor, how's your guy? They're they're in. They're like, yes, you absolutely have to go to see them. They, they wholeheartedly recommend you. They tell about their experiences with you. That's when you're getting 15 to maybe 25 referrals per month. And you can see it happening, and you know that the intensity is there because of that number. Uh, but over that 25 is really where it's at. That's where referral intensity really gets going. At this point, patients are literally volunteering your name to people uh, who haven't even asked about it. This is, <laughs> I jokingly call the, uh, the, the CrossFit uh, syndrome, um, where, you know, you, you know CrossFit people, right? And I, again, I think I am one. I've, <laughs> I, I've CrossFitted plenty in my life. Uh, but it's the people that just won't stop talking about CrossFit. That's what your patients become for you when you have true referral intensity. Your patients won't stop talking about you. They run out of the office and want to share that experience with everybody they meet. When they're at lunch with a friend, it's not them, their friend asking them and them saying good things about you. It's them volunteering information that the, their friend never asked for. And to some degree, their friend might be rolling their eyes, just like, again, when people start talking about CrossFit, and just go on and on. Um, and, and this same scenario happens now, but it's not quite as annoying. Um, and again, I don't mean to make fun of CrossFitters, a lot of friends that are CrossFitters. Uh, and I think that it's calmed down a lot over the last few years, hasn't it? Um, but in this situation, their experience with your office was so awesome that just, they just can't keep it to themselves. They got to share it with everybody that they know. And that's referral intensity. That's where I want you to be at. And that's what we're going to be working towards over the next six weeks or so. So you definitely want to stop by Monday's show because, again, we're going to start breaking down one of the essence component number one, which is cost. It is one of the most important ones. Uh, I mentioned it yesterday as far as a referral killer. Uh, and one of the referral killers is, is the side, kind of getting ahead of myself here, but we start talking about costs, and we're going to be talking about the fact that when somebody's at lunch with a friend, and they are talking about their chiropractor, and even if they're saying you're great, but the patient asks how much it costs, and they give them a case fee, and they're like, oh, it's like $5,000. You just lost that referral. And it really depends on what area you're in as well, which we'll dig into when I get into costs. So let me set that aside. Uh, that is a referral killer. It is something you have to get in control. Um, again, when patients call in or, or referrals call in and ask questions, you have to be at an acceptable number, uh, at least in the, the mid-range. So, again, we'll talk about that more on Monday. Make sure you stop on by for that. Make sure you give me a thumb up today. I see Brendan and Ray joining me here as well. Make sure you give me that thumbs up. Uh, if Samantha were here, she'd be asking for the heart, of course, uh, and ask to answer the question of the day, which let me see where that is. If you've missed it, uh, the question of the day is, is it Coke, soda, Cola, which isn't on the thing there, or pop, where you come from. Um, I think a lot of people around here in Iowa say pop. Again, I'm a central New Yorker made fun of by the western New Yorkers. Uh, so I say soda, but I still don't drink the stuff. So uh, I'm going to go back to drinking my water today. And then uh, tomorrow I get to start drinking coffee again. So looking forward to it. I'll see you all Monday morning on a true Coffee with Dr. Scott. Have a great weekend.